I think it's a perfect start to show what we can do in the future. cut up. After a quick little panic, I radically accepted my situation and started looking for alternative flights. Hey Webster's time came up on shuffle. All the flights had a long layover in London. So I decided to make the most of my L, and instead of transferring, just to fully land and tour the city for three days. It's my first time I've never been, and I'll take the train into Amsterdam. Now suddenly, I had another shot at my last day in LA, and I quickly managed to repack down to one luggage to fix last night's disaster. All my life, whenever I pack for a trip, I always do it while Miss Glamorazzi's Travel Bag Essentials from 2014 is playing in the background. Last tie cleanup included finding a way to archive this bouquet of bouquets from all the flowers I received at my gallery opening night. I stored them all into this one Megatron bouquet. I also now had to distribute the bags that I'm leaving behind to my friends who can take it to the studio later because the freight elevator to my studio doesn't work today and I can't carry all these things up myself in this time frame. <laughs> I needed to drop one last bag off before I leave and I'm stopping by at my friend's house and I realized how am I still in Glendale? <laughs> Why am I still in fucking Glendale? Get me out of here! I parked and dashed in a hurry, but stopped in my tracks at the Magdalena Bay posters. I've been a devoted fan of the pop duo since 2020. A few months ago, I went to their birthday party as a plus one, a friend of a friend. And they were so kind and welcoming, taking care of all the guests in their home. I couldn't believe it, and I, I really still can't. I remember that friend who invited me when, when they first mentioned Magdalena's Bay's name casually in passing, and I, I tried so hard to look normal as my friend described their upcoming project together. And that teenage fangirl flame doesn't just go away, not even at 25. It doesn't go away when you have mutual friends, not when you remember that they're just people, not when you're in the same room as them as a legitimate guest, and not when you summon all your senses to calmly ask, what's your dog's name? <laughs> Not when you sing him happy birthday, and especially not when she hands you a slice of chocolate cake. Oh, Los Angeles. What is my life in Los Angeles? Next stop, I realized quickly that I was now in the part of town where you don't want to look ugly. We met in this shop that confused me to the core, part clothing store, part coffee shop, part Instagram backdrop, and fully LA. Back in my car, I marveled at the bagel I got for the road. In the sun, it had an angelic quality that fully consumed me. And then I fully consumed it and dashed to my last stop because, oh my god, I am actually going to go. I am actually almost done. At the studio parking lot, there was this man struggling to find his destination within the building, and I knew the way. I also needed help for an extra set of hands to carry my load up. Four flights of stairs. However, I was actually very hesitant in this moment to ask him for help because I felt insecure about my physical appearance that day. I was scared to ask him for help because I was worried he might be cruel when he declined and i am been in too fragile of a state to handle that emotionally and I've seen it. Um, people being more willing to help someone who's beautiful, that what I mean is. And um, I lost a lot of weight recently and have become a lot more self-conscious about my looks. Yeah, people were nicer when I was pretty and I got a kick out of it until I couldn't stop compulsively checking my appearance in every single reflective glass window on the street. I truly believe that this does not speak on my personal vanity, nor this man's personal character. I don't know him, and he doesn't know me. I believe this to be a living example of how beauty gets commodified and weaponized against women in society, and to the point 
where on an individual level, I am here standing too scared to ask for help from a stranger simply because I was not all dolled up. But I did. I recognized where my fear was coming from in that moment and validated it. That's important. And then I told myself, it is worth a shot. And in the case that he does respond with cruelty, I can understand and comprehend that it's not personal. I asked for help. He did not respond with cruelty. He was so lovely and more than willing and helpful to lighten my load. And I guided him to a stop. We had a lovely conversation and I believe we both made each other's day much better. I think that's what it takes. It does take two and an awareness of one's fear, validating my experience as a woman in a patriarchal society, moment of bravery and hope and a kind stranger who helped me build new narratives in my head that can also exist. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Last peak. Oh my god, my pimple is so ripe right now. Stress testing it. Okay, that's not gonna stay. Ow! Pimples hurt! This is for a haul I got for the trip. This body cream, they usually come in a really nice, sturdy glass jar, jug. I, I've tried the vanilla vibes and I love that scent a lot and the texture, it really, my, my hands hurt because they're itchy. The, the texture is so rich and good. I've originally actually wanted this bohemian fig smell, but they were out of it. In the nice big tub. Oh, that's nice. But perfect that they have it in the travel size. I'm gonna use that for the in flight. Then I got my summer Fridays jet lag for the flight as well. Tweezers. And then they just happen to have the 500 point perk be a shampoo and conditioner set for a travel. Well, that's so perfect. Perfect. Is it a lie if you choose to edit down your answer to tailor towards what you believe is the extent of your listener's comprehension? People keep asking me why. Uh, why are you moving? Why Amsterdam? Why are you leaving LA? I have an answer to every single one of those whys. I never tell them fully though. Um, I learned how draining it is to explain yourself with the goal of mutual understanding of context and circumstance. Blame it on my experience of putting out my diary online for 200,000 people to see and each have an opinion on, I guess. But this feels like one of those few moments that I do believe it could be worth it. So here's the part that I leave out in those answers usually. I'm leaving LA because I'm getting too close to Hollywood. I'm getting everything I ever wanted, all these career opportunities, recognition, praise. You must understand that my comic series started only one year ago. The first episode I put out was in October 2023, and for all this to happen in a year is fucking insane. It's all happening too fast, and I don't believe building a lifelong art practice on the grounds of something so explosive to be sustainable. It's all starting to blind me, all the shiny parts of Hollywood, all the experience and moments that I can't state on the record. I'm too little degrees from too many people on TV and it freaks me out. It feels too simplistic to blame my problems on a location, but my experiences were becoming undeniable. In subtle, peculiar ways, the most intimate, sacred parts of my art practice started to shift towards the constant goal of expansion. Constantly the more, 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 and thinking this kind of story doesn't perform the best, and editing it, and not enough people are gonna get this one, and thinking if I should post it. I try to remind myself why I'm doing this, why I quit my dream job to do my own thing, why I poured so many hours and so much love into everything I do, why I even make art at all. It is not was not and i will not let it be about just more and more and more i want it to be about depth 
I wanted to be about connection. I was getting closer and closer to Hollywood and it scared me. I could see visions of myself getting blinded by the lights. And as the person I am right now, I don't have the strength to close my eyes. I finally actually felt like I was leaving when I returned to my rental car and my keychain was so light. Lighter than I ever remember it to be possible. I sold my car last week. My apartment lease ended last month. Passed on my extra studio keys this morning. And I still need to cancel my Touchstone membership. I think I'm ready to leave. Thank you for choosing Enterprise Rent-A-Car, National Car Rental, and Alamo Rent-A-Car. It has been a pleasure serving you. We hope you enjoyed your stay in the Los Angeles area. In a few moments, we will be arriving at the airport terminals. If you still have your rental car keys, please return them to our driver when you exit the bus. There will be six stops servicing the eight terminals at LAX. Please take your boarding pass for the terminal that you will be departing from. Thank you again for choosing Enterprise Rent-A-Car, National Car Rental, and Alamo Rent-A-Car. We look forward to servicing your future car rental needs. One last part I always leave out in answers, and it's this. The scariest thing about getting close to Hollywood is I want it to be closer. I want it to be me. My flight left on time. I think I did too.